Good morning. Good morning. Today, as you all well know, uh, when the county executive announced his budget for the fiscal year 2017, he announced a whole host of taxing fees on the residents of this county. Well, now in a few short weeks, our finance office has been able to determine that the county executive is proposing $83 million in fee increases, which equates to a 9.4% tax increase. Now, we all are in support of the governor's tax cap, which obviously tries to control spending. If you were to take the governor's tax cap versus the county executive's taxing fees, it would more than quadruple the rate to be able to get to the county executive rate of tax and fees. Nassau families are overburdened due to enormous tax bills and the high cost of living, but because of Ed McDaniel's annual steep fee hikes, they're being cost out of using parks and services and already paying high taxes. Now, as you will see on our tax and fees board, the fees that we're talking about are fees that everyday residents use, like using our parks and our facilities to make sure our kids are safe, and fire alarm, I'm sorry, alarm fees and permits, making sure that our families and our, and our goods and our homes are protected, the beach passes, pool membership. These are key things that each of our residents use on, a sum, on an annual basis, on a biannually basis, and to me it's absurd that we are looking at a 9.4% tax increase. Enough is enough. Uh, Nassau families can no longer afford Nassau County Executive's unfair, irresponsible fee hikes. Each year, the County Executive presents a disingenuous budget message to the people of this county, and each year, he realizes that these fee tax hikes are painfully impacting Nassau families and killing our small businesses. Sadly, the county executive lost sight of this vision to not overtax our residents. We must now rein them in like the governor has forced many municipalities who were, not ba who were balancing their budgets on the backs of taxpayers by implementing the 2% tax cap. Look, it's not easy. We, we need to be able to take the county executive and rein him in. He is driving up costs of being a Nassau County homeowner, and residents and small business owners need to be able to be protected and ensure that they have liability in this county. In conclusion, the county executive said in March 15 in 2010 in his State of the County address that Nassau County taxpayers can no longer have no more left to give. It's time Ed is reminded of what he said in 2010 during his State of the County address. It's time for him to wake up and realize that these tax and fees that equate to 9.4% are coming from the same people that he said have no more left to give. That being said, I'd like to open the floor or the podium to any of our legislators that would like to comment. Sure. Um, the other issue is going back to the red light cameras. Um, it's proposed that the fees will now be $200. And that is not only red light
whenever someone violates traffic laws or uses a pool or a bar membership, uh, obviously it's, the, it's a user-based thing. Do you equate that the same way as a tax increase, which affects everybody? We equate it because it's the same money coming out of everyday people's pockets. Uh, every single Nassau County resident that's a homeowner pays property taxes. Every single Nassau County a homeowner, when they go to the beach or they use the parks or they pay the arm fees, it's coming out of the same pocket. The county executive is using his tax fee practice to ensure that he's able to bypass the county governor's 2% tax. So he gets around it by nickel and diming the, uh, the residents to the tune of $83 million. If the county executive put in the right protocols and the right practices, we wouldn't be in this fiscal stress that we are in now, but because he hasn't, we are facing uh, a fiscal calamity that, that is detrimental to Nassau County taxpayers. So this is... And small business owners. This is $83 million in revenue um, that you're taking issue with, you're taking issue with the way that he's doing it. Where would you, I guess, because this is a, a short-term issue that, that that money's got to come from somewhere or be cut out of the budget. Where, where else would you rather it come from if not from fees and if not from the property tax? You mentioned the contracts. How, can you elaborate a little bit on how sure, the contracts are? Sure, of course. Are well, first, I mean, first and foremost, we have seen a tremendous amount of waste and fraud over the last uh, several years in the county. The Aptec contract, thankfully, it has not been paid out. That was a $12 million contract. The VIP splash contract, which unfortunately was paid out, was a $12 million contract. The blue chip marketing contract was thousands of dollars. The list goes on and on of contracts, of waste and fraud and abuse that occurs in this county, which contracts we would throw away out of the county's practice and be able to start anew. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The outside counts the amount of contracts that we have that go one that goes to the county executives old law firm, Rifkin Rattle, I don't know how many contracts we see, hundreds of thousands of dollars that go to outside counsel every single year. They have decimated the county attorney's office and brought in more outside counsel to be able to pay for their contracts. The, the, re the fact remains that we can no longer afford that system and that cycle. And there are millions of dollars that we can take a look at. But you know what? The county executive is charged with the responsibility. The departments in this county report to him. He is charged with the responsibility of getting a balanced budget presented to this legislature. If we had his resources, I'm sure we could find millions and millions of dollars more, but we do not. So we have to use our legislative hearing process to try to get to the answers that he has basically known or has been trying to know for the last months in the next three weeks. So I truly believe that there is money there to be saved. This tax cap, more importantly, I'm sorry, this fee tax cap would protect homeowners from getting a backdoor tax base. That's all the business. It's a backdoor tax base. So you're proposing this cap that would, at least in this year's budget, cut it by almost, it would be almost a fifth of the revenue. So you're talking about $15 million, $4 million? Roughly. Yeah, roughly. So, like you said, a lot of those contracts are already out the door, they've been executed, the money's been paid out, and the Republicans, including County Executive Mangano, have shown that they, they don't want to go forward with their contract reform proposals, at least not right now, not in the month that you have to pass a budget. So what do you do in the next few weeks to come up with that uh, $70 million or so in revenue or spending cuts? What specifically, how are you going to fill that hole? Well, I mean, that specifically is the waste, fraud, and abuse. It's, it, it's, it's, the, it's, a, it's a perpetual team. The inspector, now we're getting to a different topic, the independent inspector general, their job would be charged with rooting out the waste, fraud, and abuse. The same waste, and fraud, and abuse, if we think it's over now, because the VIP splash contracts and the Avtech contracts, all that stuff is done and gone, we're mistaking ourselves. We're, we're diluting the, 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 the or we're, 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 we're misleading the Nassau County taxpayer if we actually believe it. So there, we believe that if you have a qualified independent inspector general whose office is staffed, that you can root out tens of billions of dollars or more in waste, fraud, and abuse. It's been proven time and time and again in every office that has implemented an independent inspector general or even a qualified inspector general. But the, the fact remains that we haven't even gotten to that point. And I can tell you, I'm not the independent inspector general, but I do consider myself a fiduciary 
I do have a fiduciary rights in this county, I see the contracts that pass through this rules committee, which if we had the majority, they wouldn't be passing. These contracts are waste, they're unnecessary, and the amounts of them are unbelievable. If we can get to that point, I truly believe we'll be able to cover any shortfall that the tax and fee cap. But we haven't got to that point. We're talking about contracts that go through this committee of hundred, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, million dollars, one point five million dollars. The amounts are astronomical. So we got to get to the point of an independent inspector general because that person would help root out the waste, the fraud, and the abuse that happens. Okay, but you also have to pass a budget in less than a month. Yes. Um, are you going to submit budget amendments to create the, the IG's office? Are you going well, to... We're going to... We're going to... We're going to... We're going to... Spending in places? Sure. Like, we're going to... Well, we have to go through our legislative hearings, which we start today. Yeah. And obviously go through the next few weeks. We're going to use the legislative hearings to determine what areas uh, are, are probably the worst, are the worst off, and then probably make determinations on how we will proceed from there. But. Let's be, let's be very clear, uh, the county executive budget is riddled with holes. I mean, even if you were able to plug up some of the holes uh, in regards to the fee increases, there are tremendous holes on the expenditure side of the budget as well. And I don't believe, uh, with one stroke of a brush in the month of October during legislative hearings, that all those holes could be filled. So. That, from that standpoint alone, the county executive has handed us a document which I truly believe is insufficient and should be, quite honestly, handed back to him so he can be able to make it better. But we're not at that point yet. We want to go through the legislative hearing process, go through our, our committees, and be able to determine how we we'll proceed. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you.